Where's my Bible? Okay, peeps. I'm late. I know I said I wasn't coming on, but I'm here for a few minutes. If anybody is out there and wants to join me, let's see. Let me grab my Bible. Who's out there? Nobody's out there. <laughs> because I said I was going to cancel it. So where's my class? Praise God. Not one person found me. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to do this today because I've, I've got a headache. And I have a class um, that I'm doing uh, right now. And... It's a very important class, and it just kind of pushes into my regular time that I normally do this Bible study. So I'm sorry. For a season, I will be coming on much later than I normally do um, because I'm in, I joined uh, um, the Biblical Mastery Academy, and I'm studying um, New Testament um, Greek and Hebrew, and it is like my brain is exploding with grammar, and it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. My brain hurts. <laughs> I, w I just got out of a, um, a class. Uh, it's on Zoom, so... Sorry, guys, for being late, and um, but it's a few of you out there, okay, and um, let me see. Grab your notes from last week, and let me let somebody who insisted that I come on, and where are they? Okay, so if you are out there... Jump in the comment section and say, hey, what's up? So I know that you are out there. Okay, so hello to Catherine. Hello to Loretta. Good evening to my daughter, Shakaya. So we'll just do a few minutes today. We'll see how far we get. Grab your Bible. Put one of your ribbons. If you have one of these cool Bibles like I do that's got like the three ribbons, this is my English Standard Version I'm using today. This is a great Bible, by the way. Um, this is put out by, I think it's pronounced Schuler. Schuler or Schuler. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. See that word right there? S-C-H-U-Y-L-E-R. But they make the best Bibles ever, okay? They're very expensive, but they're worth every dime. Hey, my aunt's on, and uh, let me see. All right. Good evening to my Aunt Mary and my cousin Mary. Praise God. Sorry, guys, I'm late. I have a class. Um, that's what I was telling everybody. And I wasn't going to come on because I, I, I had a headache, but we're going to press through. We'll see how far we get. We'll just be on for like maybe to 8.30. And um, so grab your notes from last week. Things are revving up in um, the um, revelation of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation, it is revving up. And I don't know about you guys, but if you've been watching the news, <laughs> you know, you should be having some aha moments as you watch what's happening in the world. The push for a global government, globalism, that is the precursor to um, the one world government. If you're watching like what's happening in the Ukraine, Russia, China, Israel, all these nations shifting and doing things, the United States, how what happens in the 
uh, Ukraine affects what happens in the United States. They're forecasting, you know, we're already in a recession that they're denying, but we are in a recession, you know, prices are through the roof and they're even plan is saying that there may be, um, Oh, um, like food shortages, that type of thing. So, you know, if I were you, when I go to the supermarket, I would just buy extra non-perishable food items, that type of thing, because you cannot trust the powers that be. Okay. So get your notes out and let's jump back in. Man, we, we covered a lot. I can't review it, but we basically were looking at how in order to understand Revelation 13, you have to understand um, the, the prophecies in Daniel, uh, particularly, let me get Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, Daniel uh, chapter um, 7, Daniel chapter 10. You have to understand some of these things. And what we, what we found out last time about Daniel was that um, some of the things that he proposes, he defines for you if you keep reading the book. So let's pray so, so I can get all the Greek out of my head and focus. Father, thank you for your beloved people for those who have a hunger for you and for your word, thank you, Jesus, for your people and for the opportunity that you give us to gather together using um, social media, to break open the bread of life, the word of the living God, and to study, to show ourselves approved. We want to rightly divide the word of truth. So we ask for your help, the help of Holy Spirit, we want to be a people who are prepared for the coming of the Lord. We want to be people who live with an expectancy that you are coming and that very soon. Let our hearts be right. Let us be found living in faith, in righteousness, doing the works that Jesus did so that you might receive, thank you, Jesus, the glory and the honor and the praise it's in your precious, holy, strong, matchless name, Yeshua, Jesus, Hamashiach, Messiah, Savior, and soon coming King. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so go to your notes where it says the kingdom of Jesus Christ will be victorious. That's where we left off. We talked about the Antichrist ruling a world government in Daniel 7. And uh, verse 23, we, it, where it foretells the end time uh, world um, uh, government. Hey, to my fam, my family, my peeps down in Mississippi. That's my tribe down in Mississippi and Laurel and uh, Sandy Hook and Flora. They are my tribe. Praise God. All right. So um, Daniel 7, 23 foretells the end time world government of the Antichrist. And we said that um, the scriptures tell us that the Antichrist will make war against the saints. That's you and I. <laughs> and people see, now that's interesting right there because people think that they won't be here. They say, well, that's the tribulation saints. Those are the people who get saved after the church is gone. Okay, we, we're just going to see what it says, okay? You can draw your conclusion when we finally get to the verse in Revelation that says Maranatha. When we get there, you know we're at the end, okay? But for now, let's press on. So the Bible teaches the Great Tribulation will last three and a half years. That seven-year period, but the period that is referred to as the Great Tribulation is a three and a half year period, not a seven-year period. So many commentaries teach the Great Tribulation is seven years. That is wrong. And so we looked at how there's not one scripture in the Bible that teaches a seven year tribulation period. It's always described as three and a half years. So the kingdom of Jesus Christ will be victorious. So, oh wait, let me blow up my notes so I can see them a little better. Okay, so Daniel 7 and verse 27, get, we're in the Old Testament, 
um, reveals what will happen after the reign of the Antichrist. This depicts the second coming of Jesus Christ when he puts down all opposing thrones. Daniel 7, 27, I'm reading from the ESV. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and his dom all dominions shall serve and obey him. That day is coming. And so remember Daniel 7 and verse 9. Let's look at it real, real, real fast because this is a depiction of the establishment of the kingdom of God. Daniel 7 and verse 9. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. Oh, let's read verse 10 just for the fun of it. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. And the court sat in judgment and the books were open. That day is coming, people. Okay, so now we understand the identity, and, and I'm building on last week's Bible study. So if you missed last week, you have to go to my YouTube page and listen. Download the notes. They're on my Facebook page. And listen, because it was a lot of information. It's the type of thing you have to sit down with your Bible yourself and read this stuff and highlight it right in the margin, you know, so that you um, can understand um, okay, so now we understand the identity of um, the lion, the eagle, the bear, the leopard, and the ten-horned beast. Okay, we went over all of that last time, um, uh, and we will examine why the nations that are symbolized by these beasts are merged into one beast in Revelation 13. So because we went over this, looking at Daniel, Revelation 13 will make so much more sense to you, okay? If we don't understand Daniel 7, we will not understand the combined beast, that network, that beast that is a network with the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, and the ten horns of the ten horned kingdom in Revelation 13. You, 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 your heart should be leaping right now, particularly if you've been following along, because the book of Revelation should be starting to make sense, okay? Um, so this is going to be a great revelation um, with which every single one of us understand, we have to understand, because we are living in the middle of the fulfillment of these prophecies right now. We are living in the middle of it. I'm adjusting my screen so that my notes are over closer to me. Okay, so here's what we learned from Daniel 7. Uh, and let me know when I get to the point where your notes uh, run out because I just came out of one class. I didn't post notes for part two, but I will if we get to it um, today. Just in the chat room say, my notes ended there. Where's the rest? And, and later I'll, I'll post it, okay? Okay, so we've learned from Daniel 7 the identity of the lion. We said the lion was Great Britain, and we explained all of that. We said the bear is the Russian bear, okay? The eagle, the United States. Man, we broke that down. We looked at how the um, the lion with the wings of an eagle and the, how the wings were broke off. We looked at how the United States came out of Great Britain. It's all in scripture and it all makes sense, doesn't it? You know, once you understand the symbols. And the ten-horned beast is a future ten-nation European alliance. Pay attention to what's happening as all of these 
pundits and powers that be try to form this alliance because they working on it, okay? This will enable us to understand the coming world government as depicted in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. It is amazing that the symbols used in the book of Daniel, written around 550 BC, before Apple and before computers, before internet and, and all of that, before you know, all the technology that we have in 550 BC, Daniel um, um, wrote down these things that the Lord spoke to him. And these symbols were used again in the book of Revelation under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as God caught John up into um, the heavenly realm on a during a time called the day of the Lord and begin to show him all of these things. The book of Revelation, scholars believe, was written around 95 AD. Some think it might have been, um, uh, yeah, around 95 AD. Some people think maybe earlier, but um, so uh, Revel Daniel was 650 or, or uh, Revelation was written 650 years after um, the book of Daniel. And this is only possible how they line up because God is the inspiration behind, the author behind both books, Holy Spirit, and that Hebraic mindset inspired and unlocked, begin to break the, the seals off of those symbols in Daniel's prophetic revelation. And John picked them up and begin to say, oh, and write those things down. So again, we established way, way, way at the beginning of this study that if we don't read the book of Revelation with a Jewish mindset, we will not understand it, okay? Um, so you got to get rid of your anti-Semitism to understand Revelation. So the passage using the symbols, let's flip over into Revelation 13 now. The passage using the symbols is found in Revelation 13. Let's look at verses 1 and 2 in Revelation 13. And the dragon stood um, on the sand of the seashore. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and on his horns were 10 diadems or crowns and on his head were blasphemous names and the beast which i saw was like a leopard like a leopard that's germany and his feet were like those of a bear that's russia and his mouth was like the the mouth of a lion that's great britain and i felt the anointing on that and the, pay attention to those nations in the news, okay, and what they're doing. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. All right, so in Daniel 7, wait, let me keep my ribbon in Daniel 7 so that I can flip back and forth. <clears throat> Put one ribbon in Daniel 7. In Daniel 7, um, the nations symbolized by these beasts were shown as separate nations. But when we, when we get to Revelation, there's been a convergence, okay? Um, when we move from Daniel 7 to Revelation 13, the nations are no longer separate. They are coming together. Why? Because they're forming a global network. That's why you will hear, pay attention, like when you're watching whatever news network you watch, your ears should perk up when you hear them using terms like one world government, one world currency, globalism. You pay attention because listen, they're, they're talking this terminology. This is where the world is headed. Okay. And so they, they've merged into one beast 
or one global empire. And if you have the notes, um, uh, Irvin Baxter put some pictures that I pasted into the notes for you so you could kind of see his, his artistic uh, conception of um, um, these things. So here's what's interesting. Life Magazine, which featured a headline, Three and One Have Superpowers. Um, the edition of the magazine, this was back when I was a kid, March 29th, 1968. Um, what else is significant about 1968? Who knows? Who knows what's significant about 68? I'll see who, who can put it in. Um, you get, you get a, a, a woo-hoo if you get it right. But there was an article written by George W. Ball, who was serving as the Undersecretary of State for the United States at the time. Ball stated that there were enough nuclear weapons in the world to destroy the entire world. That was in 1968. So imagine <laughs> what there is now. So listen, that's why you need to make sure, my pastor used to say, you need to know that your knower knows that it knows that you are saved. My Aunt Mary would tell you the same thing. You need to know that you know that you are saved. Ain't no playing games. Because if in 1968 there were enough nuclear weapons to destroy the entire world, what do you think is going on now? That's why it matters when you see countries like North Korea um, the, in, the, in the Middle East trying to acquire nuclear weapons. It matters, okay? So Ball stated that there were enough uh, weapons in the world to destroy the world. He said that some kind of, this is what he said in 1968. He said some kind of world order needed to be established to protect mankind from possible nuclear annihilation. You should highlight that in your notes and pay attention when you hear that on the news at night, okay? So at that time, back in the 60s, four world powers, the USA, the European Union, which still exists, the Soviet Union and Japan controlled 80% of the world's wealth. That has shifted. That has really shifted. You have to pay attention to what China is doing these days. Ball proposed that these four powers, Japan was his half power, could use their control of the world's wealth to prevent nuclear war from becoming a reality. So what Ball proposed was a world government. This was all the way back in the 60s. He proposed, hello, Ms. Ann Fuller, good evening to you. Um, he proposed a world governing structure very similar to what we see prophesied in Revelation 13 for the latter days. Now, 1968, man, that's that was 50 something, what, 53 years ago? 53, 54 years ago? How much closer, um, um, how much closer are we now, you know, to the fulfillment of those things? So since that time, we have seen, since 1968, we have seen the formation of the international community through globalization and the formation of many other structures of global governance, global governance. So is this passage really prophesying world government? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, notice that power was given to the world government and its ruler. Power was given over all kindreds and tongues and nations, except for those that are going to rebel uh, against it. But Daniel 7, remember you got your finger in Daniel 7. Daniel 7 and verse 23 also describes the coming world government. And here's what it said. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So again, the prophecy specifically says that there will be a world government and its ruler is going to do his best to devour the whole 
earth. In other, in other words, to rule the whole earth and devour anybody that wants to stand um, against it. That's why you and I have to know that we know that we know that we are saved and you have to hold steadfast to the hand of the Lord and the word of God and be willing to be a witness. Remember that witness from a New Testament biblical perspective is one who is willing to lay their life down for what they believe, okay? So is that world government forming now? Well, since World War I, many world leaders have attempted to form some type of world government to save mankind from the possibility of a world ending war. After 52 million people were killed in World War II and the nuclear bomb entered the world, the cry for the establishment of some type of organization to prevent war was deafening. Now this was back during the time of the World War II because of you know what happened in the use of a nuclear weapon. After 52 million people were killed in World War II, the nuclear and the nuclear bomb entered the world, the cry was deafening. So President Franklin Delano Roosevelt led the drive to establish a system of global governance. Now this was years ago. We're much closer to, to the ultimate fulfillment of that now. When the war ended in 1945, the United Nations was formed, okay? So again, these are all precursors, see? The US Congress saw the effort toward global governance as a threat to American sovereignty. So in order to gain American acceptance to the, of, of the UN, the founders made a critical compromise. They granted veto power to the United States over the decisions of the UN Security Council where the UN's power would reside. When the, uh, you know, America is looking pretty weak now because of our current administration, but, you know, that's another message. When the other victors, victor nations of World War II realized that the U.S. was given veto power, they demanded the same for themselves. So the big five was established. United States, Great Britain, France, the Soviet Union, that's Russia, and China. They're no longer called the Soviet Union, I don't think. Um, that were, were granted veto power over the actions of the UN Security Council. So this saved the UN from being rejected, but it also prevented the UN from becoming a true instrument of world government. That's going to change one day. With the exception of the Big Five, the rest of the nations of the world with no veto power entered world government in 1945. Since that time, there have been repeated efforts to eliminate the veto power of the Big Five so the UN could become a true world government. Until now, many of those efforts have been blocked. However, the drive towards world government will ultimately, it will one day succeed. We have shown in, in the, prophe the prophesied in the scriptures and these prophecies you can take to the bank. So what happened, man, I, I feel the anointing on this part coming up. What happened to the eagle's wings? The eagle's wings are not found in the Revelation 13 verses 1 and 2 prophecy. So it's clear from the prophecy of the combo beast in Revelation 13 that you see, okay, look at it again. You see a beast rising out of the sea, 10 horns, seven heads, 10 diadems on its, on its horns, blasphemous names. The beast, you see the leopard, you see the bear, you see the lion, and the dragon gives it its power. Okay, but you don't see the eagle, the eagle's, the eagle's wings. So um, what happened? And so um, it's clear from the prophecy of the combo beast of Revelation 13 that Great Britain, Germany, and Russia will form a future uh, ten nation alliance, um, and, and or I should say Russia and a ten nation alliance will make up the world government of the end time. So look at that again: Great Britain, Germany, Russia, and a future ten nation alliance will make up the world government of the end time, okay? And there's a picture there for you. So this presents us with a critical question 
the eagle's wings, which were in Daniel 7, are not included in this combined beast. Okay? Um, so what will happen to the United States? It is apparent the U.S. is not included in the end-time world government of the Antichrist. Let's just say. Let's, let's just put that on the board. And we should say that would call for a different leader than we currently have. Because the one we got would just bow down and join a one world government. I'm just saying. So the eagle's wings do not appear in one other place in the book of Revelation. If you look back at Revelation 12, there's a woman who has 12 stars around her head. Remember, the woman is Israel. And the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So look again, Revelation 12, verses 13 and 14. Uh, and when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time, times, and half a time, three and a half years. So in other words, Revelation 12 shows you the eagle's wings and what, the, what this particular governmental structure is doing. It tells us about the role of the United States of America during this time. Now, see, to understand this or to try to understand this, you and I have to get all the bad movies and books that we have read out of our head, <laughs> okay? Because, come on, I've read them all, and I've seen all those movies. I read the whole 12, 13 book Left Behind series back in the day. I do not agree with the theological perspective, but it made for very entertaining reading, okay? Um, so if you've got all of that in your head, you might be scratching your head right now saying, well, I thought the Antichrist was going to rule the world. Well, you, there's a picture of what this gov, this structure is going to look like. We just looked at it. You got that 10 nation network and you have the leopard, you've got the bear, you've got the lion, but the eagle's wings are not a part of the beast formation. Can you see that? Can, can you see that? Okay. So this prophecy seems to indicate that, um, oh, wait, which, which verses are these? Okay, Revelation 12, 13 and 14. Um, okay. And when the dragon saw, let's, let's look at this. It tells us about the role of the U.S. during this time. Revelations, to, okay, we looked at that. Revelations 12, 13 and 14. I read that. But it also tells us about the role of the United States during that time. The dragon sees that he's cast down to the earth. He persecutes the woman, that's Israel. Um, the woman is given the two uh, wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. That's the United States. So this prophecy indicates the United States will defend Israel from Satan and his one world government during the end times, okay? That's why very significant things that have been happening. If you, if you think back, the, like the Obama administration was anti-Israel, okay? Anti-Israel. Um, oh, who came after that? Who came after Obama? Okay, so the Trump administration was pro-Israel, even moved America's um, embassy into Jerusalem, recognizing Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. That was very historic. If you were paying a time, uh, if you were paying attention, all your little end time antenna should have been um, rising. Praise God. Good evening. There's my friend, um, prophetic apostle Cindy Williams Moore. Praise God. All right. So look at this. This prophecy was written over 2,000 years ago, long before America even existed as a nation. And yet we're watching this prophecy being fulfilled with incredible accuracy in the day in which we live. Um, America is very interesting. If you go back to 1947, America 
cast the, decide, the deciding vote when the nations voted for the creation of the modern state of Israel. And really, depending on which administration is in uh, Washington, you'll see um, that, that ebb and flow towards um, relations with Israel. But you also should pay a time that when America does really stupid things as it relates to Israel and its safety, the backlash hits the nation because you just don't play with God's covenant land and his people, okay? Um, since that time, the U.S. has used its veto power at least 43 times at, at the United Nations to protect Israel from resolutions that would have been hurtful to Israel. There was one that Obama voted against, but normally America uses its veto power. Under the Trump administration, America recognized Jerusalem, that's what I just said, as Israel's capital, moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in spite of bitter opposition from the U.N. The U.S. also recognized Israel's annex, annex station, uh, annexation of the Golan Heights. And you have to go to Israel and go into the Golan Heights to understand the strategic significance of that piece of land. Israel must never, ever give up the Golan Heights. It's a very milita mili military strategic piece of land. The eagle will continue to protect Israel from the animosity of the end time world government throughout the time of the great tribulation. So America's veto power on the UN Security Council and the unrivaled military might, depending on who's the president and who likes to defund the military and downsize, which I personally, as a, as a veteran, think that's a, an asinine thing to do when you have other global powers building up their military and we're we're trying to make ourselves look wimpy 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 it's not good okay um but um when we get to the these things um you'll see that the you the, the us's military might um is is unrivaled okay and it enables the us to defy the world community while defending the nation of Israel. Now, when we shift it, now just, just pay attention. This is not like, I, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like it's pro-Republican, anti-Democrat. That's not what I'm saying. I want you to pay attention to what's happening, okay? The previous administration, strong military, strong presidential presence, whether you thought he was a butthole or not, okay? Um, current administration, weak persona, and look at what you have happening. Russia invades Ukraine. You got China about to invade Taiwan because they don't see America as a threat. But clearly that's going to shift because the America is going to be the wings that will um, um, work with Israel um, during these um, tri great tribulation time. Okay. Hey, Sam, God bless you. Okay, so pay attention to the news concerning the U.S. government, its military, and its relationship with Israel. Just pay attention, okay? So the power behind the coming world government, let's look at this. So before we leave our discussion of Revelation 13, those first two verses, there's one more thing that we have to look at. Verse 2 in Revelation 13 um, uh, here's what it says. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So some have mistakenly taught that the dragon in this scripture refers to China. However, Revelation 12, just look back one chapter, look at verse nine. And the great dragon was thrown down who is the great dragon? That ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Now he may wreak havoc in the earth using China and other nations, but the dragon is not China, okay? The dragon is the devil, the Satan, okay? So Revelation 13 and verse 2 clearly states 
that Satan is the one who will give the world government, that one world government that's prophesied for the times just ahead. That it, is, it is satanic power that will cause that structure to rule with great authority, okay? So from this passage in Revelation 13 and verse 2, we clearly understand that the drive for world government is inspired by Satan himself. It's important that we understand why Satan is the driving force behind the formation of the coming world government. His goal has been that the whole world would worship him, even if it's temporary. Because, listen, all you got to do is read the end of this book. God rules. God rules. The, Satan was not able to usurp the throne of God. He wants to be God. So he wants a world structure that's going to to root to, to worship him. In it from from a satanic mindset, it's like spitting in the eye of God. But from a God perspective, it's like spitting in the wind. You spit towards God's eye, that it just it just blows back on you. Okay, which is what it's gonna do. So this cannot be accomplished until Satan obtains control over the entire world. Like, well, like I said, with some re rebelling entities. So Revelation 13 paints a picture of a world government and its leader, which will ultimately dominate the world. The, the, that's what scripture says. And will demand that all under his control worship him and give allegiance to him. So when people pledge their allegiance to the emerging world government, not I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, but one day people are going to be pledging allegiance to an emerging world government, except for those of us who refuse to worship the beast or take his mark, which we're going to get to um, very soon. When people pledge their allegiance to the emerging world government, what they will really be doing is worshiping Satan himself. So highlight that in your notes. When they pledge their allegiance to an emerging world government, they will really be worshiping Satan himself. So let's look at um, Revelations 13 and verse number three. And I saw one of his heads... Under, underline that in your Bible, one of his heads as if it had been slain fatally and his fatal wound was healed and the whole earth marveled and followed after the beast. So what does that mean? Revelation 13 explains another vital piece of the puzzle that we need to try to understand. So some people have taught, and this is what I, I heard, you know, just growing up in the word, now, I'm not sure that that was right. I'm, I'm, that's why we're studying this. We're trying to see if some of the stuff that we were taught was crazy and if there's something else that makes better sense. But many of you have probably heard that, um, that the, 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 the one who was slain fatally was the Antichrist. There, there are some, because you see it in movies, that's how they depict it. They say the Antichrist will be killed and then three, three days he's going to raise from the dead or however they, they depict it. And they teach that this will result in the world following the Antichrist, that when he's slain and people see him rise, they'll, oh, and they're going to follow the Antichrist. But is that what the scripture says? What does the Bible actually say? Okay. We cannot possibly understand the importance of this, this, the, of this prophecy unless we carefully notice what the passage actually says. So I'm going to read it again. This time I'm going to read it in the ESV. Verse 3, one of its heads, one of its heads, one of, it, of the beasts has all these different heads. It's a, it's a multi-headed thing. It's got, you know... Ten horns, seven heads. Okay, one of the heads, it says, seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. Okay, so look at this. Notice it says one of the heads of the beast was wounded um, to death, and his deadly wound was healed. So the beast had seven heads, 
one of those heads was wounded to death and then the deadly wound was healed. So remember the beast of Revelations 13 verses one through two is a union of the four beasts of, of Daniel. So these four beasts come together. Those four beasts have a total of seven heads. So one head of the lion, one head of the bear, and the four heads of the leopard. Remember the leopard had several, several heads. We went over that last time. So that's the seven heads. And then one of the heads of the, those seven had 10 horns, okay? So now here's the important question. Which one of the seven heads was wounded to death and then healed? And has this happened already, this beast? Okay, so let's remember, let's look at this. Daniel 7, the leopard Germany had four heads. The four heads, and this is speculation. We, you, you can, we can say, mm, that's kind of shaky. I don't know if I believe that. But let's just let's let's just look at it. Let's suppose, okay, that the leopard, the four heads of leopard. Remember, we said the leopard was Germany. The, the one head was the first Reich. Second head was the second Reich. Third head was Hitler's famous third Reich that wreaked havoc in the earth. The fourth Reich, which is presently rising in Germany doing its thing. At the end of World War II, the Allies wrestled with a critical question. Germany had plunged the world into, three, into war three times within a 70 year period of time. She started the Franco-German War of 1870, World War I, World War II. The Allies concluded there was something within the German soul that caused people to have a penchant for going to war. The conclusion was reached that something dramatic needed to be done to ensure Germany would never again be able to plunge the world into conflict. So it was decided that some, some of you, if you're old enough, may remember this, that Germany would be split in half and what they created was East Germany and West Germany. East Germany, you will recall, if you know your history, was placed under the Soviet sphere of influence and West Germany was controlled by the Western sphere of influence. So this diminished each of Germany so that neither sector would have the population base nor the financial power to threaten world peace again because Germany, they said, was prone to, to violence. So they split it in half and almost like made the sides contend against each other. So West Germany was officially established May 1949. East Germany was established in October of that same year. Headlines around the world screamed Germany. Remember, this is the leopard, one of the heads of the beast. Germany is dead. She will never rise again. That was a headline of a newspaper back in 1949. Over the next few years, the Western powers began to rebuild West Germany and move her towards democracy. During the same time, the Soviets kicked in communism in East Germany, okay? As totalitarianism was imposed on East Germany, many of them began to flee over into West Germany, needless to say. So this was particularly true among professional classes or people that had the money to do that. They were getting out of East Germany. So one of the favorite routes to freedom was Germany's former capital of Berlin. So when Germany was divided, Berlin was divided, creating East Berlin and West Berlin. So I'm giving you this history lesson so that this passage in Revelation might make a little more sense. The increasing flight of professionals from east to west became known as the brain drain in, in history. In order to stop the continual hemorrhage of talent from East Germany, the Soviets built a 29 mile wall through Berlin that became known as the Berlin Wall. The wall was constructed in 1961 when I was just a little girl a toddler. The wall became the symbol of division between the communist powers of Eastern Europe and the democratic powers of Western Europe. This ideological divide was known as the Iron Curtain. So I know we've all heard this, but we've never put it like 
into prophecy, into like um, end time prophecy. So in his famous, and, and let me let me say this, because scripture says a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. So what we think, oh, that's a long period of time. It's like a nanosecond in eternity, okay? So in his famous magazine article in Life Magazine, March 1968, George Ball wrote three and one half superpowers. We looked at that just a little while ago, but here's what he did. He described the division of Germany as a rusty knife that must someday be healed. So recall the Bible's reference to the head that would be wounded to death. USA Today um, um, uh, carried an article entitled Berlin Wall, West Somber, East is festive. So the article stated the Berlin Wall's 25th anniversary Wednesday spotlighted its unique role as the stark symbol of East-West differences, the brick and mortar of propaganda, the 29 mile wound that won't be healed. Once again, major news referred to the Berlin Wall as the wound that wouldn't be healed. The Berlin Wall finally came down in November 1989. The fall of the Berlin Wall marked the healing of the deadly wound. So the last part of verse 3 states, the healing of the deadly wound will cause the world to wonder after the beast, or the world will wonder after the Antichrist and his coming world government. So within 20 days of the fall of the Berlin Wall, President George W. Bush, Mikhail Gorbachev, and Pope Paul, John Paul II met together 20 days after the fall of the Berlin Wall. These world leaders got together at Malta in the Mediterranean Sea and they came out of those meetings announcing the birth of the new world order. President Bush said, quote, we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. This was the precursor. This was the new world order, order in its infancy. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Very shortly after this, we started hearing the, the next level of that conversation, which is globalism. Now everybody is saying, we must think globally. We must think globally. So terms like world community, international community, global governance, enter the vocabulary of people everywhere. Even the church uses those terms, you know, like we'll have so-and-so ministries global, you know, um, international ministry, blah, blah, blah. World government organizations began to gain prominence. Some of them were the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Health Organization. Come on, you've been listening to that one for the last couple of years. Look at how the World Health Organization was able to shut down the world during COVID. Are you guys with me? This, all of this stuff has been ramping up. These organizations, the World Trade Organization, the International Criminal Court, and many others, July, 20, 1992, Time Magazine featured an article, The Birth of the Global Nation. In his article, I know it's almost 8.30, but we started at like 7.35, so we're going to go for about 15 more minutes, okay, if, if you want to hang in there with me, um, because we started late today. First, we Americans are going to have to yield up some of our sovereignty. That's going to be a many, to many a bitter pill. Come on, where, where have you heard that? Yield up our sovereignty, that America shouldn't be great. That, oh, 
<laughs> you, you've been hearing that rhetoric with a previous administration a couple administrations ago and the current administration. I'm telling you, this stuff is like end time prophecy being fulfilled. So look at this. It will take a lot of courage, a lot of faith, a lot of persuasion to come along with us on this necessity. Today, we must develop federal structures on a global level to deal with world problems. We need a system, look at this, this was in Time Magazine, of enforceable world law, a democratic federal world government. So here are some notable quotes. We'll look at them real fast. Um, Banker James Paul Warburg, Warburg said, we will have a world government whether you like it or not. Look at Richard Gardner, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. We're likely to do better by building our house of world order from the bottom up rather than from the top down. Okay, Rockefeller, we're on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis Look at, look at what Rockefeller said. Look at this. He said, all we need is the right major crises and the nations will line up. I'm sorry, that's somebody calling me and they don't know that I'm streaming. Um, I will call them back after I get off my live stream. I'll call right back, okay. Okay, look at this. Did you guys see that? They said all we need is the right major crisis. Pay attention how they're always trying to frighten us. First it was COVID. Now they're talking about monkeypox or something like that. The right major crisis and people will line up to take the mark of the beast. No, don't do it, okay? Mikhail Gorbachev said, we're moving toward a new world order, the world of communism. So how long will the Antichrist rule? Revelation 13 verses four through six describes the Antichrist, the dictator who will rule over the end time government. Okay, so now we're in verses four through six. Let's look at this. And they worship the dragon and because he gave his authority to the beast. And they worship the beast, that structure, that, that governmental structure. Because listen, if you worship the beast, you're worshiping the dragon. Say, who is like the beast? Who is able to wage war with him? Because it's, a, it's a, a convergence of these world governmental structures merged into one. Who's able to wage war with him? Are you guys, are you guys with me? And there was given to him a mouth. Of course, the media. Come on, the... Have you, have you been paying attention to, there are globalists, tri billion, quadrillionaires who own the media, <laughs> okay, okay, and there was given to him a mouth, speaking great, a mouth, internet, uh, social media, uh, news networks, um, your cell phone, all of that, okay. There was given to him a mouth speaking great boasts and blasphemies and authority to act for 42 months. That's three and a half years. Are you guys with me? Okay, let me see. What is, what is, uh, let me see what my friend Cindy is saying. He has been tracking and written reports on this. Absolutely. Cindy, Cindy is like a master at that type of thing, tracking, mapping, she can watch the way the, that the, the serpent is moving. That's her gift. God put her in the earth for such a time as this. I'm telling you. Okay, so look at this. There was given to him a mouth. That's the media, the, that media. Oh, okay, let's look at the seven mountain mandate. Okay, arts and entertainment, media, government, religion, education. Look at what's happening in our school systems. Um religion, how many churches are shifting, the family, so that a mouth, okay? And through those entities, he's speaking great boasts and blasphemies three and a half years. He opened his mouth and blasphemies against um, God and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, that is those who dwell in heaven. Amen. 
Um, so look at this. The only good thing about the Antichrist is that his reign of terror will be for a relatively short time. Verse 5 states, he will be given power to continue for 45 months. That's in verse 5 of Revelation 13, okay? This time frame, the same time frame for the reign of the Antichrist is given, remember we read it in Daniel 7 and verse 25, where it states the Antichrist will make war against the saints for a time, times, and the dividing of times, three and one half years. Why is he making war against the saints? Because the saints, the people of God, are going to be the ones who will not worship the dragon or the beast. They're going to say, I don't care what this world government or world currency, all this is doing. I'm not, I'm not doing it. So he's going to make war against us, okay? Um, apparently, this last day dictator will be a terrific orator. So watch for somebody who's very charismatic, has a way with words. He will speak against God. He will speak against the name of God. He will speak against his tabernacle. We see precursors of that all, you know, the, the, you know, what was it like in New York where they lit up the, the, um, uh, whatever that tall building is like with, um, blasphemous things, you know, that, that are anti-Christ, you know, pay attention to when these things are happening. The apostle Paul describes the antichrist also referred to as the man of sin and the son of perdition in the same way. Second Thessalonians two and verse four says the antichrist will exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. And he will sit in the temple of God claiming to be God. Whew, man, should I continue this, the great tribulation, or should I wait for next week to do that? Okay, let's do this one, one more section. Okay, Revelation 13 and verse um, 7. Okay, look at this. And it was also given to him to make war with the saints to overcome them, and authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. That means you need to be ready to live what you live, believe what you believe, and go through, okay? I know, see, that that's why people like to think they're not going to be here. But the New Testament church, the church throughout human history, and even today, is living the reality of this, particularly in the person persecuted church around the world. This passage tells us the Antichrist and his world government will be allowed to make war against God's people for three and a half years. It's, it's very interesting that most prophecy commentaries say the Great Tribulation was seven years. It just, it just doesn't line up. There's not one scripture that says it's a seven year period of time. Each scripture that refers to the Great Tribulation says it'll be 42 months, or a time times and half a time, or 1,260 days. And I left you some passages of scripture, which you can look up for yourself. You don't have to believe me, believe what the word of God says. So look it up for yourself. There is a seven year period called Daniel 70th week, which is referred to in Daniel 9 and verse 27. However, it states the abomination of desolation will occur in the middle of the 70th week or that seven year period. So you have a seven, seven year period called Daniel's 70th week. And in the middle of that, or three and a half years in, the abomination of desolation starts, which starts God's time clock. Okay, so Jesus said Matthew in Matthew 24 verses 15 through 21, read it, read it, read it. Jesus said the abomination of desolation occurs halfway through the seven years. He said it would trigger the great tribulation. So we know from that's why you have the notes. So I, I, I exhort you sit down. Look at these passages of scripture yourself. See if these things be so. Draw your own conclusion, okay? Um, so we know from this that the great tribulation will take place during the final three and one half years of Daniel's 70th week. <clears throat> will the Antichrist rule every nation? Revelations 13 and verse 7 
um, states he will be given power over all kindreds, nations, and tongues. Yet another passage names a few nations that will not fall under the reign of the Antichrist. If you go to Daniel 11 and verse 41, it says, he shall come into the glorious land and tens of thousands shall fall, but these shall be delivered out of his hand. Edom and Moab and the main part of the Ammonites. Um, so look at this. Edom is Petra, which is in um, southern Jordan today. Um, the Moab mountains are in central Jordan and um, Ammon is the capital of Jordan. So the scripture states specifically that the country of Jordan will escape out of, somehow out of the hand of the Antichrist. Kind of makes you wonder. <laughs> uh, Revelations 12, go back, Revelations 12 and verse 14 says that Israel will be protected from the Antichrist during the entire time of the Great Tribulation because the two wings of the great eagle. So the U.S., is, is going to be doing something during that time. Zechariah 14 and verse 2 tells us that the Antichrist and his world government will only invade Israel at the time of the Battle of Armageddon, which is at the end of the three and a half year period of time. Um, it, it occurs at the end of the tribulation. So he will go into Israel, to, to, but it will be at the end of the great tribulation period or to invade Israel, like to destroy it, that type of thing. Revelations 12 and verse 14 teaches that the eagle, which we said was the U.S., will help to protect the anti Israel from the Antichrist during the three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. So this could mean that the U.S. will be in opposition to the Antichrist and his world government all the way through the Great Tribulation. So how do we reconcile these facts? And then we'll stop right here. In Revelation 13 and 7, how do we reconcile these other passages of Scripture with Revelation 13 and verse 7? Well, the Antichrist will rule all people, tongues, and nations. How do we reconcile that? There's, there's, there's a possible explanation, and the statement implies that the, the Antichrist and his world government will dominate the world, okay? Yet there will be a few nations... Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's just like now, if you think about it, you have the kingdom of darkness, like dominating world structures all over the planet. And yet you have a nation group called the kingdom of God in the midst of the darkness that is pervading around the world. There is a kingdom that is resisting and that will not align with the darkness that is, that is striving to rule um, the world. There is a kingdom people that say no. And so it could possibly be that there will be a few nations who in spite of the Antichrist rule will, will resist. And that's going to, that's going to, you know, stimulate some conflict and some fighting. So we got to be ready. Okay, peeps, listen, woo, that's a lot. That, that's a lot. Um, I'm out of time. Um, so we're going to pick this up. Let me highlight Will anyone escape the rule of Antichrist? Uh, we're going to pick it up right there next week. And I will add the, the next part of the notes um, so that you can continue with me. And um, you've been listening to um, Bernadine Wormley Daniels, Soterios Ministries, Living Water Livestream Bible Study. I'll put some information in the uh, comment section if you want to sow. Um, we are beginning our back-to-school um, um, benevolence time. You know, I have a friend who teaches who has some kids that we support. Is, if she gives me that information or if she wants to do that this year, we will um, help her to support some kids. But we are also working with a friend of mine who has a CrossFit um, program for kids. They are in a low-income area and she has a CrossFit kids program. She's trying to um, um, 
fill 127, I believe it is, backpacks with school supplies. That information is on my page. If you want to help with that, you can sow a seed and just on the memo line put kids. We will use every dime to purchase backpacks and school supplies for those children. Or you can shop for the stuff. Um, there's a picture on my page that shows you the types of things we're looking for. Then send me a message and we will pick the... Um, We'll tell you where you can get, how you can get it to me, or I will get to you and pick it up. Okay. All right. Unless you're in Canada or Mississippi, then I can't get to you to pick it up. Okay. All right, peeps. We're out. I will see you next time. Um, look over your notes with your Bible, read, highlight, make notes and live for Christ. He loves you. And so do I take care and God bless. Good night.